Hi, I'm Sophie from Encodian, and today I'm going to be taking you through Blower's Merge Rows in Excel action. This action allows you to merge rows that are across worksheets in one file, or it allows you to merge rows that are across worksheets in different files. This action is different to Blower's Merge Excel Files action because the Merge Excel Files action will, yes, it will merge all the worksheets across all the files you're merging into one new file, but it won't merge rows. So each of your worksheets will be added as separate worksheets in the new combined file. Whereas the merge rows in Excel action would actually merge the rows on the worksheets that you select. So you can start to combine worksheets together from either the same Excel file or from different Excel files. So the blog post for the solution looks at working with one Excel file with multiple worksheets. But in the video today, we're going to be working with multiple Excel files and combining the rows into the finalized version. So let's take a look at the solution. So let's start in OneDrive because I'm using this as my data source. So this is my sales folder and you can see I've got a folder for national sales and a folder for regional sales. So let's just open up regional sales. So the scenario that we're going to be using today is that there are regional sales Excel files. So you can see we've got one for the South, one for the North and one for the Midlands. So as sales get completed, the data here is going to fill up. We're not going to concentrate on how the data is getting into these files. We're just going to concentrate on how we can start to merge the data. So let's open up one of these files. Each of the files look the same when you open them up. They just have one worksheet and on the worksheet, there is this unstructured data table where all of the data lies. So as with each of the Flowers Excel actions, the action works with structured table format. So your Excel files that have tables and the action also works with unstructured data too, like we can see in front of us here. Yes, it may look like it's in a table, but it's not in a formatted Excel table. So each of the files looks the same. So we need to be able to merge the data into one national Excel file, and this needs to be able to run every quarter. So we're going to have a look at how we can do this using Flower and Power Automate. So this is my Power Automate flow. For demo purposes, I'm using a manual trigger. However, in reality for the scenario, because the merge needs to happen every quarter, this would be a scheduled flow. The first step in my flow is to initialize this array variable called file content. And as we loop through the files in the regional sales OneDrive, we're going to append to this array. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually list the files in the regional sales folder. So we can do this using this OneDrive action here. Next, we need to loop through each of the files and we need to get the file content. Now be careful here when using the get file content action because it will ask for the file path. But when you're using this after using the list files in folder, you actually need to use the file location dynamic content that comes from that output. So just make sure you're using the right one here. Once we've got the file content, we can then append to our file content array variable. So the array item that you're appending needs to be in this format here because we're going to then use the file content array as the input into our merge excel rows action so you need to make sure you have it in a json format we're using file name which is going to be the name of the file in onedrive file content is going to be the file content that you got from the step before you don't need to put this in any base64 expressions it can just go in as it is we then have worksheet to merge, and this is going to determine what worksheets on the files are going to be merged together. So because my files only have one worksheet, it's going to be worksheet one that's going to be involved in the merge. However, if you say you had two different worksheets that you wanted to merge, it would be an array here. As we can see at the moment, I've just got one, but instead of one, it would be one. And as you notice, these are integer values. So please don't put the worksheet's name. It just needs to be the number of what the worksheet is. 
and it doesn't start with worksheet the first worksheet being zero the first worksheet is one so just bear that in mind when you're building this out and lastly we have include first row so i'm setting this as false so include first row means that when the data is merged do you want to include the header row in the merge so this doesn't mean do you want to include the header row at the top of the new file this means that the header row is going to be included with all of your data when the merge happens so that means if this is set to yes you'll get header rows in the middle of your data set because it's being included as data so it's going to be put in as data so just bear that in mind that this is different from just having the header row at the top once we've finished looping through each of the files we can then use our merge Excel rows action. So when you first put this action into your flow, I'm just going to remove this. It will look like this. So there's two ways that you can input data into the flow. You can do it this way with these set inputs here. And the blog post that accompanies this video goes into more detail there on how you can start to input your data into the action this way. However, because we've already built up our file content array, which as you may notice, contains the same pieces of information like file name, file content, the worksheets to be used, we can switch to the alternative way you can add data. To do this, you need to click this button here, which will switch the action over to this. And in this documents bit here is where you add your document content array. So the last step now is to say whether we want to preserve the first row, which we do. So what this means is that this is going to preserve the header row at the top of the newly merged file. So this is different to the include first row item that we were adding into our array variable. So just to reiterate, the include first row item, if set to yes, means that when the merge happens, let's ignore the header row, but as you have, say, data from the north. When the next merge happens, so you have data from the south, the first item is going to be the header row. So the header row will get added in your data set. Whereas preserve first row just states whether you want the header row to be at the top or not, regardless of whether include first row is set to true or false. And lastly, we need to create our new file. So I'm just going to call this national sales and I'm going to pop it into the national sales folder and the file content is the output from the merge Excel rows action. So let's run this flow and have a look at the results. So the flow has run successfully. So let's take a look at the results. So I'm going to go back to OneDrive, back to sales, national sales. See, we've got a file added a few seconds ago. And this is our new Excel file. You can see here that we've got all of our data added, especially if you look at the region column, we've got data from the Midlands, from the North and from the South. And it's all merged nicely into one sheet here. So hopefully this video has shown you how you can start to merge rows in Excel. So in the video, we followed the example where we had three different Excel files, each with one worksheet in each, which we merged into one new Excel file with one worksheet, which contained the merged rows. In the blog post, it follows the same example with the regional sales data, so with the South, the North and the Midlands. However, this time, instead of the worksheets being in separate files, the worksheets are combined in one Excel file and it still outputs a national sales file with the merged data. So if that's your scenario, please do check out the blog too. If you have any questions about anything I've taken you through today, please leave me a comment down below or get in touch with us at Encodian. And as always, happy automating.